been interested in surgery since I was a little kid. When I was, you know, 10 years old, I knew I was going to be a surgeon. I was working at the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary, and there were children, a significant number of children with birth defects, particularly a birth defect which I didn't know anything about called microtia. They had essentially a little piece of skin on the side of their head and no ear. And I kind of started asking, well, how do we treat that or who treats that? And essentially, no one treated that. I, I think I went on my first philanthropic uh, trip, uh, pro bono trip, maybe 20 years ago. I volunteered to go to Russia uh, and come in with a crew and we would operate. I was using a rib cartilage, a patient's own cartilage. And some of these kids that are this big, their chest, and you're harvesting a three by six centimeter piece of cartilage off that chest. And, and I'm thinking morbidity, the incision, the scar, the loss of the rib itself. In the back of my mind, I'm going, there's gotta be a better way. I, some, for some reason, I got this bug in my head that I said, well, I'm gonna form a foundation. I'm going to get a bunch of physicians and bring them together and volunteer to evaluate children that we bring from around the world to do free reconstructive surgery on for any facial birth defect. How am I gonna do that? <laughs> we have a patient that was there this past Friday. Every day we are involved with Babyface Foundation. Once I have the child in my fold, I get a picture of the child and put together a bio of their medical history and present it to our medical advisory board. That's what we're doing. We're offering free reconstructive surgery for any facial birth defect on any child who qualifies financially from zero to 18 years old. Diane, she'll go out, pick them up at the airport. I sets up the hotel, uh, the OR schedule. If they need a CAT scan or an x-ray, she's already organized that. It all works out. Oh, here, How are you? It's good to meet you. How are you doing? Welcome to New York. Hi. How are you? Thank you. You must be Diane. How are you? Hi. We have a question. Uh, You've never left Alabama before? Yeah, no, not this far. Not, oh, not this far. far. In Orlando, Florida, is about as far as I've been. We were wondering if that meant you never got on a plane before. Yeah, yeah, yeah never, never flown. Flight. First time. Okay, okay. I try to make it as easy as possible. They're picked up from the airport, they're taken to the hotel. What does the child need from the minute they get off the plane to the minute they get back on a plane and go home? It's a big city, yeah. Microtia, by definition, means small ear. It occurs at about uh, one in 4,000, 5,000. Sometimes it can be very minimal, a little, little bit of an ear deformity, and sometimes it can be profound, where the child has a jaw deformity and no ear at all. Hey, you look like a little bitty thin guy. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been eating down there? Huh? <laughs> Come here, let's see what happened. What happened to your ear? Did you look weird in that alligator or something get your ear? <laughs> That's how I'm moving. You're kidding me. <laughs> oh, surprise, surprise. What we're going to do is we're going to put a framework on this side. It's a porous implant. I carve that, I shape that towards the other ear, and then I put that under a vascular pedicle, and then I skin graft this. Do you like your little ear? You do? Don't you want to get rid of it? <laughs> you do, don't you? You want two big ears? You nervous? You're not. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Dad, Daddy's nervous enough for both of us. Is it okay? <laughs> to have a child go to school and to grow up that way, having that facial birth effect will affect them the rest of their life. I think the best part about what I do is being able to call that mother and say, your child can have surgery. At least I'm gonna cry just saying it. Bye, buddy. Bye. Love you. Love you. Okay. See you later. Thank you. We'll take care of it. <laughs> Man, that's a big smile. That must be some laughing gas. <laughs> Love you, buddy. We had a hard time getting pregnant with him. He's our second child. I had like four ultrasounds each time. They would tell me, oh, everything's fine. But I just felt different. When I um, have bilaterals, no ears on either side, then I use the mother's ear. It's all in the family, baby. You know, it's never really bothered us. 
just knowing sooner or later it was going to start bothering him. Yeah. Because he knows he's different, you know. Yeah. When he's, yeah. And, you know, when he started his kindergarten, yeah. picked him up the first day, he called his mother and said, Mom, when am I going to get my big ear? Peyton? Hey, Peyton. You in there, buddy? Oh, okay. Hey, darling. Hey, buddy. How are you doing? Fine. Hey. Fine. Mm, you sleepy? How you feel? Uh, feel fine? You look fine, too. These are children. To be able to take these kids and make them hear and make them see, make them be able to swallow, it has an immediate profound effect on their ability to live in their communities and advance in their communities. We know that those children are going to be crippled via the ability to socialize, the ability to get out of an orphanage. You've got 100 kids in an orphanage, which one's going to be the last to get picked? That ear would wait you down, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. That's a pretty good ear, though. When we were in Russia, the hospital that we went to, the people in the, in the Ural Mountains actually started leaving their children with birth defects and it became an orphanage because of that aspect. When we went there and operated on those children and the parents came back and got their kids and took them home, uh, it changes the way these, the lives of these kids. Supporting the Babyface Foundation ends up getting an immediate response to something that affects people's lives. Please okay. call me all the time and send me pictures of this ear and this pretty face. Helping these kids is like helping the city. They really appreciate what my dad's doing and I appreciate what my dad does. Every time he gets an award, I thank him for that. Right. Thank you so much again. You too. If I ever have a foundation or if I ever help another foundation, mm -hmm. it'll help them and it will help me to understand that. This is what people do when they have a heart, like my dad. Be good, guys. Bye, Peyton. And I don't see the Babyface Foundation locked into New York, per se, either. I think, I think the Babyface Foundation can be any group of physicians and, 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 and paramedical people who get together and, and push this paradigm out of saying, look, we can offer, we get together and raise money, we can, you know, we can change the world. And that's what we're trying to do.